Hey guys, hey YouTube, my name is Numistaka and I'm back with you today for a very special video. Um, please, if you are able to find the time, watch it from beginning to end. Uh, you'll see a lot of really interesting stuff. This video is really a dedication to the humble British 50 pence piece. The 50 pence started life in 1968, a few years before full-on decimalisation came in in 1971. And this uh, year, and in fact this month, the Royal Mint is starting to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the 50 pence piece. And you can see here some of the recent collectors 50 pence pieces. Uh, these, are, these are from regular coinage, uh, in circulation, change in shops. And uh, if you look carefully when you visit Britain, you may be lucky enough to pick up one of these uh, 50 pence special coins. Um, in all honesty, you may go through a complete vacation here and never ever once see any special circulation 50 pence pieces. As soon as people find them, they take them out of circulation you can see here one for the 2012 Olympic Games, uh, very worn. Um, I took that out of circulation. I, I pick them up and take them out of circulation whenever I see them. I don't go hunting for them like mad. Uh, the pole vault here. Um, I don't go hunting for them like mad. Whenever I see them, I put them in a little flip and I put them in a drawer and eventually I'll build up you know, a selection of these over time. But there's a lot of people who now collect 50 pence coins and uh, it's become something of a thing and very popular amongst young and old. There are dedicated uh, Facebook groups and uh, change checker websites and I think it's really started to re-establish coin collecting as an interesting pastime and hobby in the UK in quite a successful way. So uh, when did it get more serious? I think uh, the 50 pence really became famous, I guess, in 2009 when the Kew Gardens 50 pence was put into circulation. The Kew Gardens 50 pence, um, nobody even, I suppose, nobody even knew about it originally. But then I think a little while after it had entered circulation, the Royal Mint put out a press release. This is Money website picked it up. And it was realised that pretty much the lowest circulation special edition 50 pence piece was in fact the Kew Gardens. Uh, so, of course, as soon as the press had picked it up, everybody in the whole of the country was looking in their change to try and find out and see whether they had one of these mystical, magical Kew Gardens pagoda 50 pence pieces. Most people didn't find one. You started to see a lot of them for sale on eBay. They went, originally they were about £20 uh, for a standard 50 pence coin, £20, then £50, then £70, £80, £90. And the going price for these coins is probably uh, something around £100 for a standard 50 pence piece. So that's a little bit of the background that you need in order to see and appreciate the next box that you're going to see which is amazingly special it's um it was released this week by the royal mint and um, you may have seen some of these around there are some on ebay there are some uh some uh, some that are made of silver some that are made of cupra nickel this particular box contains a very very special very very rare royal mint set there were 75 only sets of five coins minted um, in gold. There were three and a half thousand sets minted in Cupro Nickel. Uh, you can see them here. Um, very nicely presented and they sold out within um, less than an hour probably, maybe half an hour. They were £90 each and they seem to be changing hands on eBay for up to £500. And then there's the silver set. There were 1,969 of these sets minted in silver and they were issued at £225. All three varieties of these sets 
disappeared, um, I think, about an hour. But it, they were meant to go on sale at nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, I was looking at about half past nine and they weren't yet on sale. So I think it was probably more like 30 minutes they were up on the website before they'd completely and totally sold out. So let's have a look at the rarest of those sets. Um, I'm sure a few of these will be sent to me over the next few weeks for grading. It'll be interesting to see how many people um, look for flipping opportunities, how many people send theirs for grading, how many people wait and see and just keep them in the box and look at the pricing. It is quite likely these sets are going to change hands for, I don't know, my guess, and it'll be quite interesting to see, but my guess is that we'll see sales at anything up to six or seven thousand uh, pounds for these coins, and it may be they'll go higher. Um, it's an exceptionally rare set. It's very uh, unusual for the Royal Mint to issue a highly popular set like this with only a mintage of 75 coins. Um, the Snowman coin, for example, which was issued a while back, a few months ago, uh, that was 400 coins, and that was the lowest mintage that had been around until that point. So each of these coins you're going to see here, there is only 75 of these in the world, um, and that makes them highly desirable. Although they're not um, brand new designs, they have taken some of the more interesting designs over the last 50 years and reproduced them. And of course these coins are unique in the sense that they have the 2019 date on as well as the original date and artwork from the original design. It's something they did I think once before for a large set uh, of 50 pence designs and they uh, they reproduced them. I think that was in in 2000. Oh, I can't remember offhand. Was it? Well, it wasn't 2009, was it? It was probably was it later than that. But I need to look it up. Uh, I had one of those in for grading a while back. So comes in a very nice box. The design of the 50th anniversary graphic I think is particularly nice. They've taken each of the 50 pences from the beginning. So the uh, you'll see each of these coins anyway. Starts off with the introduction to the 50 pence, the same design as 50 years ago, and then works its way uh, up to, is it 2010 might be the most current design in this particular set. Um, so let's have a look. Open the box. So the first thing you notice is this very beautiful, highly gloss finish wooden box. Um, and the Royal Mint sometimes mess up their quality control, but nobody can really criticise them for their packaging and boxes. And uh, the box is great. It's entirely in keeping with all the sort of standard boxes you'll have seen for sovereigns. But this one houses these five beautiful gold coins. I think this is one of the things they do very nicely. Their whole presentation is so much better than the average American uh, mint, the average US mint presentation. So there's a little card at the front with the, uh, the COA. Let's take a look at the COA and the brochure and then we'll take a look at the coins themselves. And I remember when I was a kid, um, my dad coming home with a little blue envelope full of the first decimal coins. Before then, everything was pounds, shillings and pence. Everything was divided by 12. And then decimalization came in officially in 1971. But there were decimal coins put into circulation in 1968 as an introduction to the people of Great Britain to what to expect for the future to get people starting to think in pennies, pence, uh, rather than pounds, shillings and pence. And you can see here, this one is certificate number 11 of 75. And you can see here, the big thing to look for on any Royal Mint coin is this one where they put a little asterisk, maximum coin 
mintage. Sometimes they have a, a, a set which contains, maybe the set is 100 coins or 100 sets, but actually there can be 500 coins minted for different reasons. In this particular set, the maximum coin mintage is the same as the set number. Very unusual, and, uh, and that's what gives this set its particular value and rarity. 75 coins only. And you can see here a little bit of background, starting off with the 1968 one, the modern classic 50 pence piece with the Britannia design. Then we've got the one uh, Rogers to Bannister's 1954 uh, four minute mile. The 19, uh, 2007 scouting coin. The very, very famous now Kew Gardens 250th anniversary. 100 years of gold guides from 2000 10 I think. And so you get all the background information and then of course what you've been waiting for is these coins. As I say here's COA number 11 and there is only 75 of these coins for each one. Gives some interesting things. So we start off with the 50 new pence. So at the beginning of the 50 pence it had the words new pence so that uh, all of us crazies over in Britain could actually distinguish between old pence and new pence. Uh, they soon did away with that. We then got the anniversary of Girl Guiding. Incidentally, the 50 pence in 1968 was actually bigger than the 50 pence which you see here uh, as part of the set. Uh, for the first while, of uh, its issue, the 50 pence actually had um, was a bigger coin. It was a kind of bigger, chunkier coin in your pocket, and then they kind of miniaturized it as 50 pence became worth less. The Kew Gardens is interesting because um, I think it's the only coin that has ever been issued with three dates on it. So it has the anniversary dates plus the 2019 date. The scouting anniversary is uh, also one of my favourite designs. In fact, I have got the original 2007 one, and it'll be interesting to take a look at them side by side at some stage. And of course, the Roger Bannister 4-Minute Mile is also a pretty nice design. I don't know what their particular reasons were for choosing these particular designs. Uh, I think, uh, you know, I guess maybe a committee chose which one to uh, which ones to feature on these coins. I'm not surprised they chose the Kew Gardens. Uh, one, uh, one of the original gold ones uh, from 2009 was sold recently for about £2,000 just for this coin at uh, one of the major auctions. So I'm not surprised they put the Kew Gardens at the focal point right at the front of the set. Uh, that makes sense. And I think that, um, well, the market speaks for itself. These Each one of these sets sold out within a few minutes of their launch. Uh, the mintages weren't too high. That's a really good idea because sometimes when the mintages are too high, that uh, takes the collectors out of the market. Uh, a lot of people I've spoken to couldn't get hold of these sets uh, in silver or gold, and they wanted them. And so... I think that um, it should be a pretty desirable set in the secondary market that keeps its, um, keeps its value. So this one has two thumbs up from, uh, from me. I think that you've got to be very careful what you buy in terms of modern sets. And uh, I only normally buy the ones that uh, I feel comfortable with and feel a good vibe for. This is one of those times. I think the silver sets are going to do very well as well. Uh, and they're going to do um, be a good investment. for Certainly for anyone who managed to buy them at the issue price, they should be a great investment. Um, but it doesn't mean to say that every Royal Mint issue is going to be a gem. Uh, but this particular one, I think they've got it just right uh, in terms of the mintage. Uh, 50 pences are much loved within the UK. And I hope that... Uh, there's quite a few 50 pence collectors even outside of the UK over in the States 
and Canada who might like this kind of set and it should be a pretty good investment even for people who buy it in the secondary market uh, depending on what kind of price they pay. So I hope you found that interesting. Uh, it's a, a coin with a long history and I was very happy to have this set and very much look forward to reading your comments and observations and uh, you know what you feel about the 50 pence piece that we have in the UK, if indeed anything. Please like, subscribe and let me have your comments as always. Thank you.